This aircraft is from the first V-Stoll fighter jet family, meaning that 22,000 pounds of thrust enable it to hover like a helicopter and then blast forward like a jet at near supersonic speeds. And even though it is subsonic and not designed as a fighter, the first generation of this aircraft saw dogfight action during the Falkland War and held its own against Argentine's Mirage jet fighters. Then it came to America, got a huge upgrade and continued its trial by fire. During the 42 days of combat of Operation Desert Storm, it flew 3,380 combat sorties and delivered more than 6 million pounds of ordnance. So, it became a movie and TV star. Back in the 90s, this aircraft cost almost 30 million dollars, or 7 million Pepsi points. This is military mechanics, and today we will look at AV-8B Harrier II. The AV-8B Harrier II was developed by a team comprised of McDonnell Douglas, British Aerospace and Rolls-Royce. It was based on the 1957 British-designed Hawker Sidley Castrol. However, it went through a series of extensive upgrades. The technological advances incorporated into the Harrier II significantly reduced the workload on the pilot. And to improve visibility and better accommodate the crew and avionics hardware, the cockpit was elevated by 10.5 inches and the canopy was redesigned. The Harrier II is the first combat aircraft to employ composite materials extensively. They are used on the wings, rudder, flaps, nose, forward fuselage and empennage. In total, 26% of the aircraft's structure is made of composites. The AV-8B, built in St. Louis, Missouri, first flew in 1981, and over 340 Harrier IIs were built. For more than three decades, the AV-8B Harrier has been a workhorse of the US Marine Corps. The Harrier II HV-8B is an attack aircraft with some really cool characteristics. It has horizontal stabilizers and shoulder-mounted wings with prominent anhedral or downward slope. The aircraft is propelled by a single Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine, which has two intakes and four synchronized vectorable nozzles close to the turbine. Two of those nozzles are near the engine's forward cold end, while the other two are near the engine's rear hot end while the majority of fixed-wing aircraft have their engine nozzles at the back. To provide control at low airspeeds, the Harrier II also has smaller valve-controlled nozzles in the nose, tail and wingtips. With the help of its unique nozzles, Harrier II can perform a special air maneuver called viffing, that is, making radically tight, controlled turns. The AV-8B has one fuselage centerline and six wing hardpoints, apart from two fuselage sections for a 25mm GAU-12 equalizer cannon and ammunition pack. This five-barrel cannon is based on the mechanism of the GAU-8A Avenger cannon, but fires a new NATO series of 25mm ammunition. Its rate of fire is normally 3,600 rounds per minute, with a maximum of 4,200 rounds per minute. That is some serious punch, but it doesn't end there. 
The hard points enable the aircraft to carry a total of 9,200 pounds of weapons, including air-to-air, air-to-surface, and anti-ship missiles, as well as unguided and guided bombs. It can achieve a speed of 633 miles per hour. The 7,500 pound internal fuel capacity of the plane can be increased by using hardpoint compatible external drop tanks, giving the aircraft a maximum ferry range of 2,100 miles and a combat radius of 300 miles. The Harriers were supposed to be retired. But the F-35's delays and a review that not only altered how the Marines used the Harrier, but also revealed that the airframes still had a lot more flight time in them than had been previously believed, gave them a second chance. Due to this, the Marines sought for enhancements for the Harrier force, such as more recent AMRAAM missiles and the 500 pound GBU-54 laser joint direct attack munition, which combined GPS guidance and a laser seeker. The Harrier looks like it will be around for a while, even as the F-35B Lightning II, the VSTOL version of the Joint Strike Fighter, enters service.